Well, well, the problem with this question, it kind of assumes that there's a kind of one way to do digital rhetoric. That changes um, from course to course. So I could simply say that my favorite assignment was electronic portfolios, because inside an electronic portfolio, I can have all the other assignments, <laughs> which is great. And and with an electronic portfolio, you have to come up with an interface, you have to think about audience, you, I mean, you have to do a lot of the kinds of things that, um, that we do. Right now, I have a get to know you assignment that I really like that's uh, curate four selfies of yourself. Um, a Facebook profile picture, a picture that would be appropriate for um, the the staff page of a bank, um, a dating website photo, and then uh, a picture that would be good for a textbook on 21st century history. Um, and students write really interesting things in in the context of um, thinking about these different performances of identity. A, a semester long project where they build a piece uh, a system of some kind. What I ask them to do is make some group of concrete group of people's lives better. What I've really enjoyed doing is have students understand just how different it is to develop in a hypertext environment. Getting them to compose within a story space, you know, or within a hypertextual environment um, really opens them up to digital media. And you end up talking more technically about the media itself, you know, and that's a nice primer into what it will mean then to compose in hypertext. I have students take key concepts from whatever we're reading right, and, and produce visualizations of it. If we get to the point where students are comfortable enough is we start looking at their individual artifacts and talk about them as um, clickable interfaces. In, in some classes we've been advanced enough to be able to actually start producing them in, in various web interfaces. Give them the cat generator which is the, it simulates Inventio, it's one of Greg Ulmer's conceptual tools. We have two blog posts required for each one of our students each unit, so there's six total. So if we want them to learn to do visual analysis, we'll ask them to find a text that they find interesting. So find something, some image that you noted during spring break and point out one or two important visual moments in that. I printed out the students' blogs and brought them to class. And so I had this lovely moment of all these students taking what was a digital text and having a print version in front of them and trying to trace it backwards to themselves and then slightly freaking out. An assignment that actually tracks through a whole semester. Students begin the semester with a sort of traditional research paper assignment of some sort and then throughout the semester they run that argument through multiple sort of machines. Um, I like doing remediation projects. My favorite assignment is when I assign them a remediation or remix project. Uh, so maybe it's a podcast, maybe it's you run it through Comic Life, maybe, maybe you make a mini documentary. Uh, and that has a lot to do with the, the sort of Shipka thinking, which is you've got, um, you've got a text, you have to move it um, from one medium to another, and in the process I think you learn a lot about the choices that you made and or that were hidden from you. And again, the idea being that at each moment, the argument changes, uh, it has to change, the evidence has to change a little bit, the pr presentation and delivery have to change because of the medium sort of pushing you in certain directions. I haven't really found anything that, that does exactly what I want to do in the classroom like that assignment because it really forces them to understand the relationship between medium and message and, and to understand, again, the available means of persuasion in each of these sorts of digital rhetorical situations. And it's kind of an and or and they can they have to make a case to like, is this a remediation or is it a remix or is it both and how is it um, how is it acting as both? I also want to plug um, an assignment that uh, I've been uh, doing lately along with um, a colleague of mine at Florida State, Travis Maynard, that asks students to create what we call a rhetorical assemblage to engage in the textual landscape and um, look for uh, materials uh, that they can use, uh, textual materials that they can use uh, to address some kind of rhetorical situation. Take existing texts, it could be your own texts, it could be other people's texts, it could be your own and other people's texts, um, and create something new out of it and that, that new has to be transformative, you know, in thinking in terms of copyright and fair use, and if they're using stuff that's not their own um, and or not in the public domain, then they have to make a case, they have to make an argument, a defense for why this qualifies as an instance of fair use. The way the assignment is set up, 
really invites an engagement in digital rhetoric, I think. Um, and then we also have uh, a reflection essay, uh, a pretty, pretty extensive uh, reflection essay where the students have to outline the rhetorical situation that they think their assemblage um, speaks to and is a fitting response to. In about the mid-2000s, I stopped asking my students to write papers, and I started having them draw network maps. I'm interested in mapping. Another activity that I ask people to do um, has to do with um, asking there to make some kind of map of some kind of phenomenon. I'm seeing the kinds of connections that these tools allow them to make in tracing uh, scholarly citations or access to certain journals and, and ideas. And so it might be chase, tracing sort of the genealogy of citations, it might be doing sort of um, like disciplinary maps of the field. Seeing the kind of popular and academic interplays that happen when certain ideas get picked up by you know uh, news media sources and so on. What's interesting about that is that people will choose um, various kinds of materials to um, complete that task. Everything from um, someone did a 3D <clears throat> map of some sites in Tallahassee uh, that I think is still sitting in um, our office, as a matter of fact. And then we've had some that have been uh, completely digital and everything in between. And that that raises issues of materiality, which is another aspect of digital rhetoric um, uh, that I think is increasingly coming to the fore. I teach primarily practitioners, so the one way I get them thinking about how to become a thinking director or thinking media maker is to have them actually put theory into practice. Video making, I like to ask students to think about dense theoretical concepts and visualize them through video. I do a lot of video composition with students and I like video composition because of its multimodal possibilities. And I ask them to choose one director or one film and then to ha make their own piece that responds to that. So they don't have to agree with that person, but they have to be referential to it. And then going out and taking another student's video and remixing it, I really want them to practice that meaningful appropriation and I want people to feel what does it feel like when your work is remixed? You know, when you thought you had a certain message and argument and things and then somebody remixes it and turns it into something else. You know, how is that for you as a video maker and then how is that as the person doing the remixing? That gets them thinking about, well, what, where do I stand in this tension between the camera and its ability to tell the, tell the truth? Video in particular highlights images plus sounds plus you know written words plus movements and animations and different um, rhetorical techniques that students are well versed in the consumption of video and so they know when something looks better or not so great <laughs> and you know whether they can produce that or not they can give it a try or they can analyze it and they're used to consuming those texts and so there's a lot of strategic kind of um, uh, processes happening in that assignment. Because again, like in the class I'm teaching now, oh, I didn't even know I could do this. You know, and by the end of the semester they have four or five videos and they feel pretty proud of that. You know, I don't see that when I, I used to just assign papers. I have a lot of my students actually go and look at privacy policies on websites. One of my favorite assignments is um, anything that's involving tags, the use of tags. Uh, my favorite project to assign is a non-digital project, actually, turn students loose with um, Plato. Because one of Shipka's arguments in Toward a Composition Made Whole is that um, multimodal can be more than just digital. And I find that actually assigning, get, when I get my students Plato and say, go forth and make me an argument and they actually do start playing around with it. They achieve on the one hand Shipka's goal, which is to um, have students think about process, and then having to transpose that assignment to think back through the digital, it makes them a lot more attuned to the, um, the, the material uh, substructures and underpinnings of uh, their kind of digital interfaces that they're working through. If you have 75 students to create um, a group, a Facebook group that will attract 100 members. You know the book uh, Made a Stick, but he's, how sticky messages work, and so how do ideas attract other people? And then you have mimetic discussion, you have discussions of memes, and, and how, do, how do things go viral? How do ideas, uh, how, do, how do stories pick up and branch out and forth and become other stories? 
uh, so that you can uh, learn how to build an audience. Uh, one of the big assignments I have is an informational campaign. And so students work in groups to choose an issue that's local in some way and figure out how to actually produce an informational campaign that includes a website, that includes a video on that website, um, that has some sort of branding with it. One of my uh, favorite assignments to give um, to new TAs that they have to teach is an advertising assignment. And while it's not digital per se, in engaging those, those logics, you're, you're thinking about and, and resting with the digital. Let's think about rhetoric. And let's think about the ways it can be pursued. How is it that the digital shows up for us, makes itself available for us, shapes and contours us? I mean, it's basically treasure hunting or scavenger hunt. So it's really easy if you're going to like introduce students to the whole notion of space and navigation and the way that digital technologies work in terms of that. And they're able to end up in the medians of busy roads finding things. You know, it's, it's an easy sell. A couple of ones that I really like in terms of like both production and analysis are uh, working with Wikipedia, for instance, like engaging and interrogating what Wikipedia is and how it works and really fully understand that from kind of a genres perspective and then going in and, and working directly into Wikipedia and seeing what the responses are and then and doing an analysis of, of those responses. So I do have an assignment uh, where students have to create either Wikipedia articles or additions to Wikipedia and I think it's enormously instructive. If you think that in, in the terms in which um, you've specified really because if you think that um, uh, digital rhetoric um, or any rhetoric is also about epistemology um, then creating something for Wikipedia is nothing if not an epistemological enterprise